Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the May edition of the NITEX uh, mini school. Uh, in this month, we have a, a team of two lecturers for the, for the mini school. Uh, we have Dr. Kingsley uh, Obodo and Dr. Cecil uh, Ouma. Uh, they are both based at Northwest University and they're both working in, of course, in, uh, in, uh, with quantum espresso, yeah? but in the, in, in the general area of, uh, uh, of material science and computational modeling uh, with an eye on, uh, on renewable energy and, uh, and, other, and, uh, and, other, and other applications. Yeah? And, um, and we are very grateful to them because Quantum Espresso, uh, which is a, a very popular uh, tool based on density functional theory for discovering many electronic uh, structure calculation and um, modeling at, at the nanoscale uh, is a very useful tool. And I think it's, uh, we have access to it because it's open source. And it's very important that we encourage the community to make use of these fantastic tools that, um, <clears throat> that are available to everybody. Yeah? And I know that um, Kingsley and, and Cecil also made an effort to, guarantee, to secure some access to the CHPC so that in the course of the, of the school, uh, you might have uh, also the opportunity to, to test what you learn uh, for, for on, on real uh, uh, super fast hardware. Yeah. So Kingsley and, and, and Cecil, I'm not sure how, uh, who of you starts, <laughs> yeah? but uh, you're most than welcome now to, uh, to start. If you want to share your screen, uh, you should have all the rights to, to do so. And um, yeah, and, uh, and I give it over to you. And maybe just a reminder to the participants that uh, the, school, the mini schools we, we set up as meeting, yeah, so that each of you has the right to unmute yourself and, uh, and ask uh, questions. So please do that at, um, so that um, we can give uh, Kingsley and, and, and Cecil uh, a little bit of feedback. As they as they go along with um, with dispensing their, their their materials, yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Kingsley and uh, Cecil. Over over to you. I don't know who 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 will start. Yeah. Uh, you you need to unmute Kingsley. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, excellent. So, we are in business. So um, I will start with the presentation. I'm sure you can all see the slide. So yes. um, we will be giving you various series of um, lectures on Quantum Expresso. And I do hope that at the end of this, you will be conversant with using the software, maybe not an, at an expert level, but you will at least be able to do some fundamental material science and maybe some kind of other computing depending on your interest using Quantum Expresso. So the action plan for today would be, would, give, would allow you access to Quantum Expresso either via your own computer or the CHPC. My assumption is that some of you have installed this software before or some of you have not, but either way we'll see how we go with that. Um, structure the structure files that you would need are usually in the C format. You have different formats, but um, for for now we are restricting it to the C format. So you can get it in um, the materials project, open database. You can get it in um, this um, AMS um, database and the open quantum materials database. The database is not exhaustive. There are lots of other databases. So materials project has uh, materials and design has its own database. And you can also view the structures by hand, depending on your level of um, knowledge. Um, please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. You can just raise your hand or something, then I would see that. Um, you can convert your C file to QE input file using the Burai um, Windows, the Burai. It works in Windows. And then we also have Materials Cloud that you can use to generate online your input files. So for the purpose of this, we've just shown these two because the Burai will be elaborated on further and I'll show you how to use Materials Cloud. So at the end of this um, today's seminar, you should be able to 
do a single point calculation, lattice constant and the relaxation, lattice constant and cell optimization, which will be VC relax. I'll have to mention something before I continue. We would not go fully in depth into the quantum mechanical um, details of how this code or how everything is origin uh, originated. But we will try to give you a bit of flavor of what the input file you need to run basic calculations and where you can access some of these tools that you would need. So what we would require at the end of today is to have performed lattice cell optimization. So the lattice cell, the unit cell is made up of A, B, and C coordinate. You would have optimized that. You would have done your K-point optimization. You would have done your E-coil optimization and your cell optimization. So we'll would be giving you some, some assignment which would entail performing the band structure and the density of state calculation on pristine TIC2, the bulk system, and as well as the monolayer. If you have any queries, do not hesitate to contact me or CISO. This will entail some of the things we'll work on in the next class. So um, I'll hand over now to Cecil to show you guys uh, this. <clears throat> okay, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to, to Quantum Espresso. So Quantum Espresso is normally abbreviated as either QE or in many papers you will see it written as PW, uh, PWSCF. So Quantum Espresso, it is an open source code. So because it is open source, it means that it is freely and readily available. The user community is very big and broad. So anytime you ask, you just need either to first uh, to a form, or maybe you ask anybody you know who is uh, working on Quantum Espresso. So it is a computational package, just like Material Studio or VAS and the rest. It is just that in this case, uh, for us, we liked it initially because of its open source aspect. So it means that we can easily access it anywhere the license is open source. So in order for you to get Quantum Espresso, you, need, you go to the website that we have listed there, the website that we have listed there. So in that website, you will see, uh, when you open it, you will find uh, this image that you see here, which has all these uh, menus like home, the project, download users and stuff like that. So uh, if you are a first time user of Quantum Espresso, you will have to, when you click download, you will have to register yourself in. So when you, you create an account, after creating an account, uh, you go to step three where you will still be able to download. And then once you click on download, you end up with this page that you see on your um, left-hand side, whereby you will now have to log in, you, you register everything until you click accept and register. And then once this process is done, you will reach step four, whereby when you click, where you are told to click there, you will get uh, your details there. So that is how you are going to, you are going to access Quantum Espresso. So once you do that, you still have to go further in to download the software itself. So currently we are at version four, version seven, but even earlier versions of the code are still available. So it depends. Maybe if you have a reason why you need an older version because of maybe an iteration removed some function, so you can still go back to those previous versions. So when you download it, it will be a tar file. It will be tarred. So when you untar it, you get uh, the folder. And this is mainly the, if you wanted to install it on a Linux system, you normally just go inside the directory that you untarred and you just type um, dot slash config and to make all, and you just wait for it to install by itself. Usually when you do this, it will go pick up all your system um, system files. So if you have a, if you have, um, a multi-core computer, it is gonna install it in parallel, or also you can even force it to install in serial if you want. So that is normally the procedure if you want to obtain and download Quantum Espresso for, for a Unix system or a Linux system or, or any line, other Linux systems. And then for the Windows users, 
these days at least it is they have made it simpler there is an application called burai so burai comes with the quantum espresso executable installed in it so when you go to that web link that i have indicated there when you open it you will see the first, the, the first image that is there so you can click which uh, your operating system i have only tried it on windows so i don't know if mac os and ubuntu will also work but perhaps you can give it a shot so when you click on the windows one it will give you the image below there with the with the settings on how you are going to do it so after downloading the file it will also come as a tar file and then when you enter that file you need to copy it to your c uh, to your c directory and then from there when you open it you are going to get the executable for burai so you will also need to install jre the java runtime environment because it is the one that normally the back end of this uh, of burai so if you uh, uh, another thing we needed to mention was like uh, because of the briefness of the school we are going to limit ourselves to one structure so that everybody can have a feel on what is supposed to be done so as already indicated by kingsley we are going to use either materials project project or any other database to get our sif files and then once we have gotten our sif files we are going to create the input file so, so one way of creating the input file is the materials cloud which you will be shown later but then another way of creating the input file is using burai itself so when you open burai uh, you will see the image that is there in step one um, so if you have been using burai before and stuff like that so when you open it it will recently it will take you to the recently used directory but if you have um, you have just installed it afresh you will see uh, the folder the directory they are called examples and then from examples it will show you that burai can read input files that are either in sif format or in pwscf format which is the quantum espresso format or even if the structure you have is in xyz xyz coordinates so if for instance you click the sif directory it will show you a list of maybe some of the examples of the tutorials they have on burai the structures they have used there and you will find like if you click one of them if you click one of them it takes you to it opens a uh, a window like this so in this case i downloaded the structure that we will be using during the tutorial and then i just imported it into burai for just for demonstration so the beauty with burai it is like it is not only just an input file generator or a crystal structure visualizer you can also use it to run um, the quantum espresso itself the way other codes like material studio does while before but while if you want to do bulk and numerous calculations it is normally advisable you use a linux system or you go to you use like a high performance uh, computing facility so when you open the c file you will see the image that you see there in the central there and then if you click on the three bars on the left hand side it will give you the menu that uh, that is there the one in black so in this menu, you will see there is a run command, there is a screenshot, there is a way you can save, there is modeler, it modeler is whereby you can create your surfaces and stuff. And then there is the input file. So the input file, if you click it, even if you, uh, you imported your crystal structure in XYZ format or SIF format, it will give you the quantum espresso input file. Then if you look at the bar on your, on your right, you will see several commands there, like the, the controlling calculations, the ion and the cell optimizations. And if you go down to the, the bottom right, you, there is a, 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 a term there that you call optimize. When you click on it, it will give you the inset the, that I show there. So from there, it means like, uh, if you want to run like an SEF calculation, you just click SEF and then the input file will be generated. 
or you click optimize and then the input file will be generated. If you want to run molecular dynamics uh, for ab initio molecular dynamics calculation, you click on MD and the rest. So all of these are all the calculations that you can do with the quantum espresso. So after you've chosen your calculation, you just need to click run. So because this one, I was trying it on my, on my laptop, you see it's picked up the number of processors in my, in my, of, in my computer. So now the only thing I needed to do is to save the project. And then the moment I run, the icon will change and write optimize the way it is written there. So as the calculation progresses and even as it goes to completion, uh, you can come and click result. So if you click result, it will you will see all these files that are being generated. So the in file will be the quantum espresso input file. And then the output file will be this file that is written as the log file. So if you have time, you can play around with this and then you see how you can easily run calculations using, using Burai. Then one thing we need to remember is that SEF calculations are normally very large. So normally the junk files or the temporary files can be many. So the moment you are done with your, with your calculations and you've gone and, uh, further to your post-processing, it is normally advisable you delete your temp files or else uh, the memory in your computer can, can run out. That is why it is advisable that when you have larger calculations, you can go to CHPC, uh, CHPC account so that you can run bulk calculations on it. So I'll hand over to Kingsley to continue with running on CHPC on, on computer. Okay, um, hello. Uh, please, are you still on with me? So I'm hoping that um, this will be more interactive so that we can progress together. If you all can, please go to, um, go to your Google and type the materials project. If anyone has um, a question, please um, do not hesitate to just ask. Um, if we all there by the CHPC, can we raise our hands up? I'm not the CHPC, sorry, the materials project. If we are all there, can we, can we indicate by raising our hands up that we are at the materials project? Okay. Now, if you are at the materials project, as we mentioned before, we are interested in TI3C2. So you can type that into the materials project column, TIC32. So go into materials project. Um, I don't know if um, if I'm also sharing what I'm doing right now. So you can type T I C three two. Uh, Kingsley, we only see your slides at the moment. I'm not sure if you are sharing something else. Okay, okay, maybe I should um, also share my new share. I should also share my browser. Uh, then uh, I think you might have to. Uh, ah, yes, perfect, excellent. There it is. Thank you. So if you go to the materials project, this is essential. Then um, for those of you, if it's your first time, you might, might ask you to log in using your Google account or whatever. So it's advisable, you can just log in with your Google account. We are interested in TIC32. Uh, I just need to be sure that... Um, I'm just gonna go back see if this information was provided here. Is anyone able to, if you are able to see the TIC32, um, so if you type TIC32, you'll be able to, you see the struct, the unit file, the, um, the file for TIC32. If you scroll below, it shows one folder and you can click on that folder. You can download this file. 
Um, you can either use the primitive or conventional unit cell, but I generally prefer to use the conventional unit cell. It, does, it depends on um, the problem of interest. So I will download this and um, I already have it downloaded here under this folder. So I'll just underscore new. I have downloaded it. So is anyone having problem downloading this file? Um, I assume no one has a problem. So the next file we need is titanium because we want to do other computations. So we'll download TI. So we'll, the TI, I clicked on the first one. If you look at something interesting, okay, I, I don't want to go so much in details, but this says it decomposes to stable. So it means that the compound where titanium in this configuration is stable. So I can download the conventional unit cell as well for titanium. And then I'll save it in my home directory. Then the last file we need is carbon. So I can also take the first one. I could um, usually I'll advise you if you're looking at carbon, use the FCC structure. But um, for the purpose of this um, tutorial, let's take the first one as well. And then I've downloaded this. So the next part of the tutorial involves us going to materials cloud. This allows, um, he showed you how to use Bri. So I'll be showing you how to use materials cloud more interactively. Um, if anyone lost so far, have you all downloaded if you, okay. Um, yeah, so I see a hand raised. Um, can you, can you unmute and tell me what the problem is? Hi, sorry, I um, I fell behind a little. So we were built to all of the, the CIF files for TIC, TI3C2 and then okay. TI and then C. Yeah. Uh, when you click, uh, there's a CIF file and there's a little download icon and it says there's a computed convention. When I click the... Uh, if you click on the oh, conventional wow. standard, yes. There's so computer and there's conventional standard. Okay, and must I get computed? No, use conventional standard because oh. we're still going to do our own computation. Okay, okay, thank you very much. And then do the same for TI3C2, TI, and C. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm just going to give um, 30 seconds, so hopefully people would have downloaded it. If you have any questions, just um, I, this is the very basic part. So I hope all of us can at least download something. I think if you know how to download the structures, you are one way towards um, you are some way towards at least knowing what to do. Because for every material science, you need problem you want to solve. You need to be able to find the appropriate structure that you are interested in solving. So, like I mentioned earlier, you can either build it yourself which we used to do back then, or you can go to a database that has it and then you can do this and then you can download it. All right, now I'll proceed. So the next thing is um, we talked about uh, materials cloud. So I'm just going to go to materials cloud. So in materials cloud, okay, I should go back. But if you, okay, I just want to go to the materials cloud itself so that um, I, I don't want anybody to be confused. Um, I've used this quite a lot. So materials cloud, you go to Google, there's materials cloud, you click that. This opens materials cloud. So materials cloud is also another database with archive that has a lot. So we want to work. So we click on work and then um, So under work, there are tools. So I'll click on the tools. Has anyone lost so far? 
Okay, under tools, I would click on the first thing you see is quantum expresso input generator and structure optimizer. I would click on that. From here, I would go to browse. Um, I saved those files that I had a priori. Um, so I presume you've saved yours. So I'm just going to click on the one I call new. And then I'll open. So now it asks, um, select the file format. The file format we downloaded is zip file. I'll click on that. Um, is anyone lost? If you're lost, just raise your hand up. Hey, Kinsley. Yes. Yes, it's David here. Yeah, I got, yeah. I, I got lost when you say from material yes, cloud, you go okay. to work and then after work. Okay, I'm going to open the chat. In the chat, I think I should click to everyone. Then if you open your chat, I just typed where I am. So you go from uh, materials, I can go back, but this is on the link. So I go back, so to materials cloud work, then it will show the tools icon, I click on tools, then I come to Quantum Express, so input file and output file visualizer, which is um, where the link I, I clicked on here is. So now we want to select um, the file we're interested in. So first of all, we'll select the first file. Um, the first file will be TIO2 conventional, and that has been selected. The second is um, this shows the select the file format. The file format is a C file format. So we select that. Um, I would use the PBE, but you can use, um, I, I will use the PBE functional. And uh, this is rooted in the quantum mechanics. These, um, these systems are two dimensional material that we want to investigate at the end of the PBE soil is more, it's more, it's better for more compact systems like your FCC structure, like looking at aluminum or magnesium um, chloride or those kind of compact systems. So it would be nice to understand a bit of the background, the quantum mechanics. So for the purpose of this lecture, we wouldn't go deep into that. So I'll choose um, the precision one. I, I know because I've done this before that these systems are non-magnetic, so I'll take non-magnetic. But it's advisable when you do like um, your proper calculation to consider the non-magnetic and the magnetic and the magnetic ground state. So I'll choose non-magnetic. And the, the smearing and how I want my calculation, I say fine. I don't want to refine myself using this um, software. Um, then I will generate my input file. So it will take about a second and then got it. Warning. Got it. Um, okay, yeah. So um, someone said they can only see the materials project browser. Can you see the materials cloud? Um, someone can just speak up. Uh, no. Uh, no, no Kingsley, we see only the Explore materials uh, website. Yeah. <clears throat> I should. Um, I need to share my entire screen. And can I stop share and reshare? Yes. Yes. Of course. Please do that. Okay. Stop. And then I'm just going to share. Uh, you you can share the desktop. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes. No, it's not. Um, just a second. Okay, share all windows. Yeah. Oh, this is sharing all windows. Uh, Um, okay, I'll just keep switching because, um, sorry, strangely enough, I'm not seeing shared desktop here and I usually see this. So um, from here, um, can, you, can you all see where I am on materials cloud? 
Uh, yeah, now now we can. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. If you have selected the parameters I indicated before, so I can. Um, these are the parameters I chose. I would put this in the chat box. So I chose these parameters because um, I know they are fairly accurate and they've been tested. So, so in, in most cases, we don't need to do convergence tests, but we would, we would hope to do it. From here, you can come and you can say download zip, download input file and pseudo potential. Sorry. So, yes. Um, at the there where it said uh, where we were at upload your structure and we chose SSP precision PBE and non magnetic yeah. metal. Um, yes. For the uh, were we supposed to say SIF file with the parser as ASE? Yes, you should. You should. Uh, okay, I'll just go back. Um, and then were we supposed to upload the structure for TI? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, okay, thank you. So um, if you do that, you can click on generate. I'm going to go ahead and do for titanium as well. Um, the, the, my previous setting doesn't change, so I can just do that and generate. And then there's always a warning. So uh, in this case, I, I say we should download the zip file and the pseudo potential. Um, I will show you in the next class that we don't always have to do this um, downloading the pseudo potential because it gets indented. So we can um, download this and then I can rename the zip file as ti in my directory. I just go back again, it's the same. I do for carbon and you would find out later on that um, you don't actually have to do go through this uploading onto the website and doing this every time you want, but this is a very simple way to get started without having to fiddle with a lot of parameters that you don't know. So I've also generated the zip file or my input file and slow potential for carbon. And I'm downloading these and I say underscore C. Now, at this point, um, if do you all have um, at this point, yes, you download into your hard drive, download to your hard drive. And please, um, Use sensible naming so that you can find your download later. Maybe you can create workstation netex and create um so you now you know where you where where the file is at any point in time. So um I would I would move forward now with the presentation. So So um, I'm just going to um, just talk about what we want to do today. What we want to do, I hope the time will permit us, is to do an SCF relax and VC relax using the PWXCF command. You can use whatever text editor you like. I, I like to use Vim, but there are, two, there are lots of, you can use Gedit, um, Wordpad, Emacs, Nano, there's, there's countless of them. So I'll just explain. And SCF means I'm doing a single point calculation. Why the relax means I'm relaxing the positions of the atoms. I'm relaxing the position of the atoms. So um, it was shown here in this picture. You can see that these atoms, you can actually relax the individual position and that's what relax does. And then variable cell relax means that I want to relax the positions as well as the cell. So we will try this different um, relaxation technique and then, um, and then see how it goes. There are other um, kind of calculations we can perform like NSCF and bands. In my beginning, in the beginning part of the class, I, I said the assignment for next week is to do bands and DOS. So I hope most of you would get there before then. Now to run this calculation, we can run this calculation on our, on our computer. If you have, um, Linux installed on your computer. You can run this calculation on your computer. 
Um, I don't know if the if for any of you, uh, if there is anyone, um, is there anyone that has um, Quantum Express already installed and Linux already installed on their machine? And we can just speak up, it's fine if you have it already installed. Hello? Try to show them now. Can you can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, Kingsley, we can. <clears throat> the Linux screen. No, we, we can see still uh, one slide. Okay. Uh, Input file generation slide is what we are seeing. Oh, all right. So can you see the new screen now, the Linux? Yeah, screen? now we can. Now we can. Yeah. So this is the question I'm asking. Has any of you, do any of you have Quantum Express installed on your computer? If you don't, you can just say oh, we don't have, and it's okay. Um, I would, okay, um, I would address your question. You can't, you couldn't find, where to download the files, not yet. Okay, if you want to check whether you, you have Quantum Express installed on your computer and is working properly, the, the simple test is to do something called pw.x and then it tells you I have it installed. So I'll do a pw.x that tells me I have it installed. So um, I will just show you how to run this basically. I think I have about um, a few minutes here to show you this. So for the first file, these are these are saved as zip folders. So I would want to unzip. So I should um, unzip. I will start with pw underscore. This is from the main, the main um, work we need. Yeah, so please replace. And you want to rename, I want to rename. The new name, I'll just call it ti3c2 underscore directory. So I can go into my tic32. Um, CDTI. Sorry. No. Uh, just. So, okay, um, what I'll do because it's, I'm having a naming problem, but this is fine. I'll just move my new PWS here file to TI3C2 underscore directory. So I can go in there. And because we can run this calculation in our local machine, I've got, um, I've got my PW scf.in file that was downloaded. So this is the file that um, the code created. Due to the level of precision, this is kind of very high precision and we'll talk about it. So we'll look at um, K-point optimization and um, we'll look at K-point optimization as well as ECOT optimization. So you can run this calculation either in the serial mode or in um, the parallel mode. So it's usually advisable to run in the parallel mode. This takes um, advantage of the power of your computer. So I'm going to run in parallel. And this is some of the things I've provided in the, in the, in the, in, in the, in the notes there. So I'm just typing it out. So, okay, I'm just, uh, sorry, I'll kill this. The reason why is I wanted to run in the background, so I put an ampersand. So if you want to know the process running in your background, you can do process PS minus A. So it tells you that PWACF is running and MPI is running and um, I just submitted process. So I can do my 
dot out, you can see my calculation is running. Now, because of the level of precision I want, this calculation is being set up at, it will take a lot longer time. So we need to optimize e cut K points, and all those parameters. So are you all with me up to this point? Hello? Um, someone can just speak up. Yeah, we are all with you, Kingsley. <clears throat> okay, okay, now this is, um, so I'm just going to go back to, to the PowerPoint presentation. So, so far, so good. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So far, so good. I've showed you how to run in serial and in parallel. And I've showed you, you can check your background jobs using that. And then you will get something called the total energy, which the cell was trying to show earlier on. This is very important. If we want to calculate um, stability of our system, energetic stability or photocatalytic or catalytic properties. And uh, now I would move to how we can run on the CHPC. So um, I created a list and I sent to all the participants, giving you a username and um, a password. And in the subsequent email, I sent another email showing you how to log on to the CHPC. Is there anyone that um, didn't get it uh, that is not on that list or does not know, doesn't have an access yet? If you don't have an access, you can just, so you can just tell me. So for now, I've showed you how to run a PWSCF calculation single point. I know it can be a lot taken in all at once, so I understand. So logging onto the CHPC, um, this is um, a few, I'll just copy this and paste here on the chat. This is like um, what we intend to do. So I am, um, I, I decided I am student 001. So I should go back to sharing my other screen. And then I should try and make it um, bigger. So I will do SSH student 00, zero at lingdown.chpc.ac.za. And it will ask me for my password, which I do not know by heart. Sorry, I'll just have to check it just, just a second. Um, you can always just copy your password from this list so that to avoid typos because um, the password is case sensitive. So I'm going to paste my password and I'm logged on. Can you all see that I'm logged on? I said that in this, even in this message, I said that in the C on the CHPC, it's not like working on your local computer because um, resources needs to be allocated to on a first come first serve basis and on a need on a, on a per need basis. So for this school, they reserve some resources for us. We can only run our calculation on something called Luster. And I provided the link here. So you have to move to that directory. I did one fundamental assumption. I assumed that everyone here can use Linux. So I hope I'm not wrong in that my assumption. So, I try to go in here, the student is not found. So when I come in here, the student is found. I was playing around on the workstation earlier on. So I'm, I'm now on the CHPC. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split my screen vertically because I want to copy some of these files to the CHPC to be able to run the calculation on it, which happens to run it a lot faster. So I'll just go back one step and I will do this and that. So, um, so I need to know where I am on the CHPC. So I'm going to make a directory. It's always good to make directory useful. So I could say in text underscore SCF in, okay. 
So I'm going to go into NETEX underscore SCF. Then um, currently the directory is empty. I want to know where I'm working at. And then I copy that because I need this when I'm when I'm copying files from the CHPC. I don't know how much of my of my diary of my stuff you can see. So to copy a folder, you use um, it's like um, to copy a folder, you use minus R. To copy a file, you use um, you, there's no minus R. So I want to copy a folder. So I'll say SCP minus R um, T I D underscore D to student zero zero at lingao.chpc.ac.za. And then I paste the, the location or where I want the file to be on the CHPC. This is exactly what I typed previously for you guys up there. Um, sorry, I don't know my password because this is just a very temporary password. So I'd come back here and paste it here. So it has copied all of these into this. Um, can you all see what is going on? Okay, uh, I see a question here. Yeah, you have a typo. You you have double T on your student, so it should be one T. So um, the, this is the beauty of Linux. It's very if you make a mistake, it is very sensitive. So that's the beauty. So it tells you you've done something wrong. Okay, so I'm on the CHPC now. Um, I think I'm, I'll copy part of my presentation. I think I did. Yeah, I copied part of the presentation and I pasted here to tell you like to copy files from your local directory use um, SCP minus R. So you can just, um, the beauty of running on your computer is you can just do MPI run and just submit. On the CHPC, you can't just do that. You need to create a submission script because it is governed by a queuing system. The queuing system allocates how the job runs on the CHPC. And different um, supercomputing facilities use different queuing systems. The, the CHPC use your PBS queuing system. You've got like the SLOM that is being used in um, the UK, and then you've got different queuing system for different supercomputer. So I will now, oh. Um, can you all see the screen I'm working on? So I'm going to make this other screen very small. Uh, clear that and then um, I think I want to remove my out directory from the other calculation that was running. So what I'll do now is I'm going to say, okay, look, I need to create um, a quantum express so um, submission script. So we have up to, I think, uh, I don't know if there's version seven. Okay, there's version four. I think last time I saw version seven. So this allows me. So for this project, um, I sent an email saying earlier on, and I, I think I also indicated here, saying that um, when the project name is going to be WCHPC, to allow us to run. And then it always wants an, an input file with, um, with, with the extension .in. Uh, I just forgot what ours is, so I'm just gonna cancel that. And then I'll just um, refresh myself. So it's pwscf.in. So I can go back here. This is W CHPC pwscf.in. Then um, what do we, we want to do a PW calculation, not CP. CP is your Caporonello molecular dynamics. I want to run it on one node. One node has 24 cores. And so I would just say, let me say for the sake of this, um, I'll say one hour. And then I would just mail address. So I'll say no, not to submit because I want to show you the structure of the submission file. So it is created that um, p dot the, the p dot p sub file. If you look at this file, it's you can actually do this file manually. 
So for those of you that can program, you can create a bulk um, input file, a bulk file, a bash file that generates bulk file for you to do a rapid calculation. So that's the power of um, running in the non-graphical user interface versus the graphical user interface. So it says, um, this is my executable where it's located. And it says, this is my PWSCF in and it wants a PWSCF out. So I would close this. And then to submit, you can do a QSUB. And I think um, if I'm not wrong, I included that in this command saying PSUB, QSUB dot file uh, um, and your file name you submit and that. So now I can check the status of my running job. I can say Q start minus U and user. So it's still on the queue because it um, takes a while to run. Um, at this point, I want to ask you any questions so far. If anyone is lost, if anyone um, has something um, unique to say. Hello? Any questions? Okay, no, I assume no questions. You're all following me. Um, is there anyone that is not logged onto the CHPC or couldn't log onto the CHPC? Okay, I assume you all logged onto the CHPC and you are doing fine. So, um, On my local computer, I'm just going to show you. On the local computer, I ran the same calculation. I ran the calculation for that I submitted on the CHPC. And convergence has been achieved in 13 iterations and is giving us the total energy and the Fermi energy of this and the Fermi energy of the, of the system. So the total energy will discuss um, the use of the total energy in the third class and how we can do for the computation. So um, something important that I said we would want to do today is to optimize your, your, your lattice parameter. Now, I just opened back uh, my input file. So this input file I used here, now there are, there are, very, there are a lot of drawbacks depending on what software you use to generate your input file. So we can optimize our e -court row, our e -court, sorry. So I'm going to block out the e -court row. The reason is that the e -court row, depending on the system, it can be three times or ten, it can be eight times or 10 times your e -court wave function. Um, before I go too far, is there any question? I hope people are you're following me. Or is it too complicated? Hello? All right. I'll assume you're following me. So so I'm just gonna come back here and Sorry then I'll show see. you. Yes. There is a hand. Oh, okay, yes. Um, you can unmute yourself and ask. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yes. 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 Um, I'm quite lost right now because all of this is uh, well brand new to me, <laughs> and I'm trying to catch up. Is there a way that um we can have the the, the recording sent to us in a way, or maybe we can access it some somehow, so that we can go through all of this maybe in our spare time as well. Yes. We are recording. We are recording the lecture, and we will upload it on our YouTube channel uh, as soon as possible. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, All right. All right. I understand it's quite near, so that's why I gave some assignments for you. And then, since the recording is, um, you have it available. You see the assignment. So something very important. I'll just draw your attention before I overburden everyone because I. I think uh, I overassumed the knowledge of the crowd. So um, Quantum Express, so the reason why, why a lot of scientists use it is that it's an open source software. So it means there are lots of users like me and they are using this code all around the world. 
So if you have a problem, it has, it has one of the best documentation, I think, of any open source code. So you can come to like, um, if you want an input data description, there is, um, you can click on input data. It shows you what the PWS input file will look like. So for the sake of time and the, and the length of this school, we would, we would do PWSCF and then we'll do a bit of post-processing on it. So if you click on the PWSCF, it shows you what all of the stuff I've been talking about, what it means and how it relates to the project and how it relates to, and, and, and the relationship. So in, um, you have things like um, the con you have, um, so I'll just quickly just show you this because I think there's no point rushing ahead when you are lost. You have your in the you have your control. You have your systems, electrons, ions, cells, um, FCP, atomic species, atomic positions, K points, and cell parameters. Depending on what calculation you want to run, it will depend on what would be available. So the reason why I decided to use Materials Cloud was to simplify this for a beginner. So by the time you start doing more complicated calculations you would be able to access um, some of these smaller nuances of what to do. Um, part of what we scheduled today was to do an optimization of the lattice parameters, the e -cut and um, and the k-points. So I have written a small script, which I will send in the mailing list. And um, just want to point out that I also created um, a Google Doc document that should allow us to interact even after this lecture so that you can, um, if you have questions, I, I, I think there are some more advanced users in this class so they can answer the questions or I can answer the questions myself. So if you go to the Google Doc document I shared, I asked the first question already. So, so don't, don't, feel, don't feel sad to ask a question, it's okay. Um, so far, so good. Is there any question? All right. I'm going to go back to the to the slide. I'm going to go back to sharing the slide. And then I'll just take one or two more minutes of your time. So I in this presentation so far, I know most of you, you would, you would get it um, by, the, by the subsequent presentation and if you look at it. We have showed you how to run basic calculation on your computer, on the CHPC, how to use materials cloud and materials project. I think um, you would find some of these, um, and then how to use the Bri software to help you generate um, your input files and even to try and run small calculations. The Bri software might not be very useful when you have to run a very large calculation, unless you have a super large computer that are at your disposal. So I'm just trying to highlight the assignment. I hope you can all see. So the assignment is, is as follows. So this is um, the optimizations we would require to do. So I, I have showed how to create an input file. I would, um, but at the end of this um, today, I will send you a small screen where you can optim where you can change the K point, the E chord, and the lattice par and the lattice constants to give you the appropriate lattice constants, and then you can do an energy versus um, E chord or lattice constant plot. So this would be more. We'll do that more in detail next week. Um, do you, anyone have a question regarding the structure of the input file? I know it, it can be very complicated for first time users. Hello? Hello? <laughs> all right, so I assume we are all confident and we are all comfortable with that. Any more, any questions? All right, um, so, so do you wanna add something? Okay, um, if there are no more questions, I know we started um, one minute past, so it's three minutes, it's just one minute past three. 
So this will be the end of today's lecture series. So um, I would implore the class. So I posted the questions in the chat box so you can just copy. It. I would implore you to look at um, optimization of the lattice constant and K point and E cot. And um, for this particular system. So if, um, you, if, if you need help, please um, write an email to me, write an email to CCL, post the email in the Google, um, Google Word document that we created. It's a lot for a one hour class. This is more like a full day class just to teach this, I understand. So in the absence of any more questions, um, I don't know if Francesco is still here. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm, I was on mute. I'm here, I'm here. Um, so, thank um, you, King Cliff. <clears throat> yes. So I would, um, I would leave it to you. I think we should end for today. And um, I would see the questions from, the, from everyone. And then hopefully, um, this would depend on the, on the level of each participant. I know different participants are at different levels. So that's why I created the Google um, Word document. Please post your questions and ask questions. And hopefully by the end of the week, we should be able to get to, should, we should all be, at, by next week, we should all be at the same point where we can run a calculation. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Kingsley. Uh, I think it's uh, the, the, the moment I think is uh, appropriate <laughs> to finish for, for, for today. You just spoke just about an hour. That's absolutely perfect. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you so much for, for, for setting up the, the, the Google Docs and making it easy for the participants to, to, to get in touch with you and, um, and, and, and pose your quest the questions uh, also in the, in, in the following day. Yeah. Um, as, as, um, as was said before, um, we recorded <coughs> sorry, this lecture, and uh, as soon as Zoom uh, releases the recording, we will uh, upload on our YouTube channel, and um, either from directly from the YouTube channel or from the Nitex website, you should be easily uh, able to, to, to find it. Yeah? <clears throat> Otherwise, next week we will, uh, I will share the link in the, in, in the chat if you have uh, difficulties, but uh, by, by tomorrow or so, it should be uploaded. Yeah? So Kingsley and, uh, and Cecil, Thank you so much for this uh, very nice uh, introduction. It was really uh, very practical and, and hands-on. So I'm sure that um, Quantum Espresso will be very busy the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So thank yeah. you very much, everyone. Uh, we will see you again uh, latest uh, in a week's time. In the in the in the same, you can use the same Zoom link that you use today, and you don't have to re-register if you have registered already once. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kingsley. Have a good afternoon and a good afternoon to everyone. Yeah. <clears throat>